is less more. So there's been a lot of debate on whether Liela should have expanded. A lot of people are for it, and a lot of people have been against it. I would constantly see comments on my channel on how Liela should have stayed with five members. Whether they should have or not, of course, is irrelevant. It has happened, and they can't go back. But I can't help wonder if adding more members makes Liela not as special. So to tackle that, I wanted to see if the OG Liela with five members, which I'll call Generation 1, is truly better than Generation 2, where Mei, Shiki, Kinako, and Natsumi were added. Gen 3, which we'll be adding Wien and Tomati, is still pretty new, so I'll stay away from that discussion for now. But now with that out of the way, let's go over how I'll mathematically decide which one I prefer using some intense science. So the first category that I'm going to be looking at is the story. And now I'm not going to pretend the story is the most important thing for me or that I understand the deep literary intricacies of stories. I'm pretty simple. I just want to enjoy this, this story. And as long as it's not too egregious, I don't really look too much into things. I'm not going to analyze every single section. This is not an English class. I never really liked English class anyways. So I'm going to really dumb down this section because I'm kind of dumb when it comes to the stuff. And I'll just be asking myself one question. Which season would I rather watch again? And I'm going to be ignoring all the songs in there because that's a different section. So just rewatching it from a story perspective. So season one focuses on the creation of Lael. It's the origin story of the girls. And for sure, it has a lot of usual story elements that Love Live anime tends to have. We have an orange haired leader who wants to be an idol. Then we get a gray haired girl who comes in and helps support the orange haired girl and her idol ambitions. The student council president wants to shut down the idol group and the school's threatening to shut down. I think you see the point that I'm trying to get across. There are a lot of things that happen across all the Love Live anime. But of course, Love Live Superstar has some things that are unique. Like for example, Every girl is a first year in this first season, so there are no upperclassmen. Another note is that there were only 5 girls in this group instead of the standard 9, which of course allowed more time to flesh out for each girl. When you have 9 girls for 13 episodes, each girl will likely get about 1 episode that focuses on them, but when you have 5 girls, you do the math, you can do at least 2 if you want to. And of course it allows the bonds amongst each girl to be more robust. Less episodes are dedicated to expanding the group to get to the final number, therefore more time can be allotted to further explain the hurdles that each girl experiences. For the second season, we had the Generation 1 girls become second years as a new school year has started, and therefore of course a batch of new girls will join the school as first years. This is the first time we got to see girls move up in the years, and I was really excited to see how that played out. In reality, it wasn't as unique as I was expecting it to be. For some reason, I was thinking the second years would feel or act a lot more like upperclassmen, but most of the girls don't really change that drastically at all, especially in terms of looks and personalities. And um, one thing that sticks out is like Connor likes to be called a senpai, but. Beyond that, I don't know, they still kind of feel like the same old Generation 1 girls. So that was that kind of felt like a miss R2. I'm not saying they had to drastically change, but a little bit would kind of been kind of nice to see. And speaking of the devil, a lot of people did not really like the story of Season 2, where we had Kano be the star, or should I say the superstar of that season. Some people definitely believe season 2 was all about Kanon, and I don't see it that to be that bad. But I definitely felt like the first years could have got a bit more of a fair shake. And also, the two generations, they kind of acted really independently of each other. A lot of times, I get it. You generally want to hang with people more of your year, but it would be nice to see a little bit more cross-gen interactions. I don't know. That, that thing that would have been nice. That's something you definitely see in the other anime but we didn't get that quite as much here and of course the rival for season two will be Wien and as a rival she was a little bit more interesting than Sunny Passion which you know they won 
the Love Live competition, and then they just got steamrolled by Wien. Like, dang. Yikes. Sunnypot really never felt like a proper rival, just kind of like friends that showed up and they never even got a full song animated. That that really was kind of unfortunate, the treatment that they kind of got here. But Wien, on the other hand, she got two epic and very well animated songs and, well, acted like a real rival. So anyways, we're going back to the question, which one would I rather watch again? It's not so clear cut for me. Either one it would have been definitely fine for me to watch, but I if I had to watch one again, I'll probably go season one. As it's kind of the origin story and there are some fun elements that you get when they're trying to build the story. It's, it would be fun to see how Liela became a thing again and what was the thought process behind it. But that's not to say I did enjoy parts of Season 2. We had the Rent Gaming episode, which I really enjoyed seeing. And then we had the resolution with Sumina and Kukun Season 2, which was one of the best episodes from Superstar in general. And those were some great things to have. But in the end, Season 1... Despite taking a lot of so similar elements from a Love Life series, which you're going to get that in Love Life regardless, it still has a unique feel that I don't think other seasons of Love Life really capture. For the next category, I'll be ranking the characters in Liela. And this is just could of course be based on my personal bias, but it's generally going to be a combination of personality, character design, voice, and our solo songs I sing. And, but just in general, how much I like them. I'm going to make it extremely brief to prevent this from going for a really long time. So, ninth place I'm going to put Natsumi, 8th place I'm going to put Chisato, 7th goes to Kinako, 6th goes to Shiki, 5th goes to Kano, 4th goes to Sumire, 3rd place goes to Kuku, 2nd place goes to Mei, and 1st place goes to Ren. These are not set in stone rankings, of course, can change as time goes on. I'm a little bit more unsure about my rankings for the Gen 2 girls than I am about how I feel about the Gen 1 girls in general, but this is approximately how it is. I've definitely been liking Mei a lot from what I've seen from Season 2, and Shiki has been moving up a little more rankings, especially because of her soul song, but more is to be... More needs to come out before I'm really sure about these rankings. But now, if I take the averages of Gen 1 and Gen 2, Gen 1 gets an average of a 4.2, while Gen 2 has an average of a 6. So, in general, it seems like I like the Generation 1 girls more than Generation 2. Now, I'll put an asterisk bias because I am more familiar with Gen 1, and generally, the more time you have with something, generally, the more you like it. So, that may influence it to a degree, but in general, Gen 1 has been more liked. And this next category, I'm going to be ranking the solo songs for each girl. So, I'm only going over the first solo song because the second generation girls hasn't got second solo songs. And no, I'm not looking at Liela and Uta. So, just their first song. So, I'm going to go ahead and rank them. And again, I'm going to be quick about this to prevent it from going too long. So, in ninth place, we have Kanon's Kokoro Kirarara. In eighth place, we got Kinoko's Beginner's Rock. Seventh place, we have Natsumi's Ai o Chodai. Sixth place goes to Sumine's Heroine's Runway, 5th goes to Ren's Reverb, 4th place goes to Yuki no Kakera, 3rd place goes to Kuku Already Stay Positive, 2nd place goes to Mei's Akara Kokoro, and 1st place goes to Shiki's Glass Ball Rejection. The really big winners are the first 3 songs. The big winner for Gen 1 was Already Stay Positive, that's just a really fun, bright, positive song that I, and I really like Kuku's energy in there. And then I kinda like Friends. It's a little slow, but it's a song I enjoy listening to once in a while, and she's just got a kind of nice vibe with her song. Second place is definitely pretty far away from third place with Mei's Akane Gokuro. I just really like this song. It's got a lot of spunk, and it's kind of like, ooh, this is really fun to listen to. And then Shiki, which I think is a slightly above Mei's song with Glass Ball Rejection. It's a, just a really cool, intense sounding song, and I was not expecting Shiki to have something that's really cool cutting song to listen to. I don't think it's for everyone, but I don't know, I seem to really vibe with this song because I this just is like this brings a cool side out of Shiki and really definitely changed my opinion of her. 
Now if we take the averages from Generation 1 versus Generation 2, Generation 1 had an average of a 5.4, while Gen 2 had an average placing of a 4.5. So in this case, Gen 2 wins. And while this is just an average, I really think Gen 2 is actually even further away because of how great our main Shikis. Kinoko Natsumi I don't care so much about, but they had two really hard hitters. So this in my mind is definitely a big win for Generation 2. The next section I'm going to be going over is the group songs, but strictly just the ones that were in the anime. So we're going to have some animations that we can look at, but in general I'm going to mostly be focusing on the songs. So here is the list for all the songs for Generation 1, and here is going to be the list for all the songs in Generation 2. I'm not going to go over every song, there's too much to go over that. And I'm also going to technically put in Welcome to Boku no Se no Sekai, while well, that technically was season 2, it was only performed by Generation 1 girls, so this is a weird exception, so I'm going to slot in under Gen 1. Yeah, I don't know. Weird stuff. So, I'm going to highlight a few songs from each one, and for Generation 1, the songs I want to highlight is Start True Dreams, Mianai wa Kaze no Yoni, Tiny Stars, Nonfiction, and Starlight Prologue. These are the songs that I find to be big heavy hitters and are songs that a lot of people really like and for me specifically has been songs that I listen to a lot. These are all fantastic songs. Probably one of my favorites would be Starlight Prologue. That's like Snow Halation for me. I really love listening to this song. And then we have the opening ending. I generally just like the opening ending song but these both hit pretty dang hard for me. Tiny Stars was a really nice passion song with Cuckoo and Kanon. Yeah, technically it's Kuka and it's not Liela. I'm gonna put it here anyways. But I just find this one a really nice, passion, fun song to listen to. And a nonfiction is one that, you know, most people tend to like. It's a good song in general. And now for Generation 2, the hard hitters for me would be Oika Keru Yume no Saki de and sing shine smile these two songs are really great the ending theme was one that it was very unique and very different from all the other ending themes and we got to see all the girls interact this is the kind of stuff i wanted to see in the anime we saw the girls change hairstyles and the girls feeding each other those moments are just really cute and i just really enjoyed watching it a lot and then sing Shine Smile is just a song I like listening to all the time. It's a fun song. I find it really nice to listen to. And then past that, I don't know, Vitamin Summer was pretty decent. But that's kind of it. So when you take a look again at the list and the ones that I've denoted as big winners, Generation 1 percentage wise has much more. In general, Generation 1 just had the better songs for me. It has bigger quantity in of songs that I like, but also just in percentage wise, it's just it's better. And that's kinda of thing. Generation two whiffs on the opening for me and the final ending song where that was used for when they won the Love Live finals, it was a very underwhelming song for me. And that's the unfortunate part is that the group songs just don't do it as justice in generation 2. So when it goes to generation 1. The next section will be ranking the group songs but this time not the anime. So this is going to be a list of all the songs that were done by the group that weren't in the anime and we could see I'm not gonna go every single one I'm just gonna highlight the ones that I find very notable. So Ones that I found very notable in Generation 1 is Haji Ma Wa Kim no Sora. That is the first song that they ever released that came out with a PV. And uh, that was a song that instantly sold me on the potential for Layella. Yeah, well, it's a pretty good song. Past that, uh, there's a bunch of alright songs here, but nothing that really grabbed my attention here. So let's take a look at Generation 2. 
Generation 2, the song that really grabbed my attention is Second Sparkle, which also got an MV. This one it was with the Seiyus. And this one, when I listened to it, I was like, whoa, this, this is pretty fun to listen to and got a little intense with the instrumentals. Has that? I would say a miracle new story. That was the song that was for the themes for School of Festival 2, that kind of that collaboration. Probably one of the better things that came out of School of Festival 2. And then past that, there isn't anything that I would say, yeah, I really, really liked. I know some people like pop talking and so on, but those are the two that I say really grabbed my attention. So, in general, what one was better? Well, in terms of Generation versus Generation 2, I'm not noticing a big difference in terms of the group songs that weren't in the anime. They both had some good songs, and then they have a good amount of songs that I felt alright about. So in general, I'm not really sure who I'd give the win here. So I'm just going to say no contest, or it's going to be a tie in this category. So when we tally up the tolls, we have Generation 1 winning with 3.5 categories, while Generation 2 only gaining 1.5 categories, if you want the tie to be half a point. So in general, it looks like I liked Generation 1 Liela more than Generation 2 Liela, but it's not so one-sided that it's clear that Generation 2 was trash and Generation 1 was way better and they should never have gone to generation 2 but I also asked you guys in a poll and I was curious to see what you guys thought about it and of course you guys overwhelmingly voted for generation 1 over generation 2 so I, I really don't think it's a secret that in general people favor generation 1 and in many ways it's kind of unfair uh, the girls in generation 1 had more time you know existing but should have Leela stayed as five members? Though it's still true that I do find that Generation 1 Leela had a more unique style. There was more raw motion in their songs, and no other group, including Gen 2 Leela, have captured that. Adding more members changes the style of the group for better and in worse in some ways. Adding more members allows for more styles and interactions that the fans will enjoy and of course having more girls means more opportunities to cover different personalities and styles. And that can help find new fans find new girls that they like more than what was there before. Because what if someone's new favorite character is Mei? If we didn't have Gen 2 Liela, well, that just means that they would never had the opportunity to find a new favorite character. I like the new girls, they have some great moments, and I really like some of their soul songs. However, having more girls does mean there will be less focus on each individual person, and that also makes each voice less pronounced in the group songs. Which is part of the reason why some of the songs have a different feel. Yes, 5 members was unique. And moving to 9 is very much the standard group for Love Lives, so it's not too many members like some of you say. We've already had this number before. But of course now it's going to be 11, so so much for that anyways. And of course yes, 5 members made sense. There's 5 sides to a star. But they can be a superstar with 11 girls, I guess. So yay? No, I do like the girls. They start as first years and they grow up and they go through high school. They get underclassmen to join and they get to ex expand the group. It feels much more like a natural progression and it's cool to see that. And that was part of things I was always curious to see. Like what if Mies continued? What if Aqua continued? And what would have happened after the girls graduate? And of course, again, if you don't expand, there would have been no Mei, Shiki, Kinical and not to me, and would that have been okay to you? For me personally, the answer is no. So, to conclude the debate, yes, Generation 1 was more light than Generation 2, but that's not to say Generation 2 is bad. 
Was adding more members worth it? For me, yes. Because I like the new girls. But it's also true that I feel like something special was kind of lost there. And there are some minor losses because of that. Yes, we have some other groups that have five people in it. And for example, we have Synchrize. But, you know, sometimes maybe less is more. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below. Do you really think that going to Generation 2 was a mistake? Did you prefer Generation 1? How do you feel about this whole thing in general and the groups expanding? Of course, it's too late. It's, it's already happened, so I know all well. But it's definitely a discussion we can talk about potentially. So they might expand that as well. But what about future generations of Love Live? And what would you like to see? Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you guys think about this all in the comments below. And hope to catch you guys in another video soon.